Before the agreement, uh, they tell us, as part of the discussion, oh, they tell us how many good jobs NAFTA is going to create, how many good jobs free trade with China will create, how many good jobs the Korean trade agreement will create. After the agreement, the word comes out, hey, this is a great opportunity, shut down in America, go abroad, pay people pennies an hour, bring your products back into this country. Mr. President, in two, Madam President, in 2011, uh, we were told that we just had to pass the South Korea Free Trade Agreement because of all the jobs it would create. Same argument, another free trade agreement, it's going to be great for the American worker. U.S. Chamber of Commerce told us that this free trade agreement could create some 280,000 jobs in America. Instead, the Korea, Korean Free Trade Agreement has led to the loss of some 60,000 jobs, and our trade deficit with that country has gone up from $16.6 billion in 2012 to $25 billion in 2014. And now, Madam President, the administration, Wall Street, the largest corporations in this country, now they say, trust us. Forget about everything that we said about all of these other trade agreements. Yeah, maybe we were wrong on NAFTA. Maybe we were wrong on CAFTA. Maybe we were wrong on the Chinese Free Trade Agreement. Maybe we were wrong on the Korean Trade Agreement. But trust us, on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, it's different. This one really, 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 cross our fingers, this one really is going to be different. This one will support about, they say, some 650,000 American jobs. You know, Madam President, it is one thing to be fooled once. It is another thing to be fooled twice. It is another thing to be fooled three times. But there comes a point where the American people are catching on that one of the reasons why why the middle class of this country is disappearing, one of the reasons why most or many of the new jobs being created are low-wage and part-time, one of the reasons why real inflation accounted for wages for Amer American workers has plummeted is because of these disastrous free trade agreements. So you can fool me once, you can fool me twice, maybe I'm dumb and you can fool me three times. But there does come a limit to how many times you think you can fool the American people. Madam President, when we talk about why the middle class of this country has been in decline for the last 40 years, one of the important reasons is that since 2001, we have lost nearly 60,000 factories in this country. Over that same time period, we have lost over 4.7 million manufacturing jobs. In 1970, 25% of all jobs in the United States were manufacturing jobs. Today, that number is just 9%. In January of 2001, there were 17.1 million manufacturing workers in this country. Today, there are only 12.3 million manufacturing workers. In my small state of Vermont, we have lost 34% of our manufacturing jobs over the past 14 years. In January of 2001, Vermont had 47,000 factory jobs. Last fe February, it was down to 30,700. And that is true for virtually every state in this country. Now, why is this significant? It is significant because historically, manufacturing jobs paid the highest wages available to blue-collar workers. If you had a job in a manufacturing plant, if you had a union, the likelihood, likelihood was that you would earn decent wages, have decent benefits, and you can actually support your family. You earn the wages that enable you to take good care of your family. But with the decline of manufacturing, what has happened is we have seen a huge increase in service industry jobs, McDonald's, Walmart, where wages are low, benefits are nil, 
and American workers who work there are having a hard time surviving economically. Manufacturing goes down, people lose their jobs, and wages go down, and new jobs will be created which pay significantly less than the jobs that people used to have.